All right, so um, we're going to talk about where something is continuous in this section. First, let's define what that means. Okay, so if we want something to be continuous, all right, and we talk about this not like anywhere. We want something to be continuous at a point x equals c, okay? For that to happen, the graph must approach certain values from the left and the right side, okay? All right, so what do I mean by this? Let's, let's talk about this for a minute. Suppose the point I'm considering is this one, C. Okay? And I want to know, is the function continuous at C? Okay? Well, here is what I ask myself. If I was here, all right, and if I was walking over to that point C from the left-hand side, right? I would look up at the, or look down at the graph and track in which direction the graph is going and where is it approaching. So if I'm at the first point I drew here, is the graph above me or below me? Above you, right? Right here, it's above me. So this is continuing forever. So the graph is above me. And as I approach C, that point C, and I look at the graph, is the graph going up or going down? It's going down, and it's going further and further and further down. And as I get very, very close to C, what do I see the graph doing? I see the graph approaching a certain height. Is that right? I see the graph approaching this height. Right? I see the graph approaching this height. Right? Now, suppose I was doing the same from the other side. Now the graph is still above me, but as I'm approaching C, in which direction is the graph moving? Up. And as I get closer, I see that the graph is approaching, hey, that same exact height. Okay? So whether I walk towards C from the left or from the right, the graph is approaching the same y value. Is that right? Okay. So now I say, okay, what y value is the graph approaching? Oh, it's L. Okay. Now, if you look closely at that point, now I ask myself, hey, by the way, remember how yesterday um, we had a, a function and we were looking at like what is f of 1, f of 2, right? So going back here, so now I know that from the left and the right, the graph is approaching L, right? So now I say, hey, as at x equals C, what is the y value? What's the y value at x equals C? L. Okay, so because it's approaching L from the left, it's approaching L from the right, and the value itself at that point is L, then I say it's continuous at x equals L. Okay, now, that's fine. But now let's talk about a limit. The limit of the function is just the first part. What y value is the graph approaching from the left and from the right? All right? That's the limit. All right. So now let's talk about this and let's talk about limits. One more thing, in order for the limit to exist, the graph should be approaching the same y value from the left and from the right. Okay, so now let's look at this and let's talk about some limits. Okay, here's how we write limits. I say, if I want to find the limit of a function, 
As x approaches a value, I say the limit of f of x as x approaches c, let's say. Okay, that's the notation for a limit. All right, now take a look at this one. This is asking me what is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4. Okay, so let's go over to negative 4. That's negative 4, is that right? Yes. Okay, now, so here is how I do this. As I approach negative 4 from the left-hand side, what do I see the graph doing? What y value is it approaching? 3. Okay, still don't know if there is a limit. As I am approaching negative 4 from the right, what y value is the graph approaching? 3. If the graph is approaching the same y value from the left as it is from the right, then I say the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is equal to 3. Okay? Now let's do the same thing for 1. Yeah. What would be an example of a niche? Oh, we're going to do a couple of examples. You'll see. Okay, so look at this one. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1. Here is 1 right here. Okay? As I approach 1 from the left-hand side, what y value is the graph approaching negative 1? Okay, does it get to negative 1? No. no, but I don't care either. Okay? As I approach 1 from the right, what y value is the graph approaching? Negative 1. Because it's approaching the same y value from the left and from the right, I say the limit is negative 1, even though, does the graph exist there at negative 1? It does not. But I don't care about that for the limit. Limit is only where is it approaching. That's the definition. That's it. Sometimes that's necessary. Okay? Yeah. Well, not anything. So let's do another example. So, okay, so what's f of negative 4? 3. What's f of 1? It's a hole there, so there is no graph there. Yeah. Okay, now the limit as x approaches 5. Okay, so 5 is here. As I'm approaching 5 from the left-hand side, where is the graph approaching? 5. From the right-hand side, where is the graph approaching? 2. Because from the left, it's going to a different y value, and from the right, it's going to a different y value, we say the limit there does not exist. D-N-E does not exist it's it does not exist yeah the the term is dne so how do you know which one you follow right they have to be equal from the left or the right so how do you know which one you follow if i am approaching five from the left hand side where is my little person the little stick figure is here okay if you look up or down where is the graph is it this graph if you look up or down from here or this one? It's this one, right? So when you're to the left, that's the graph you follow, and that's going to 5. When you're to the right of the point, this is the graph you follow, and that's going to 2. Okay? So, it's, so they will never be right below because it's always approaching. Okay? Okay. All right. Another way to look at it is like you could, you know, you could draw like an imaginary line at the at five, and then see on that line, right? Where is there a graph here? So to the left of it, where is it? To the right of it, where is it? And if they're not at the same point, they're not at the same point. I refrain from that in pre-calc honors because that's not a very healthy habit to have on our way to calculus or AP calculus even, okay? We really want to do it um, like the legitimate way. Okay, yes.
But if there's no no line in there, but like if it says at five, so there's no dog there one. If there's nothing at five, it's like barren country, then it doesn't exist because there is no graph there. But they won't really ask. I mean, I don't know. Then it, you would just say it doesn't exist. Okay, look at this next one. The limit of f of x as x approaches 0. Where is x equals 0? Right here. So if I approach 0 from the right-hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? 0. From the right-hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? 0. So the limit to that is 0. Aiden. Okay. All right. So, okay, so types of discontinuity, all right? Let's talk about discontinuity now. There are three types of discontinuity. You can have, okay, the first case, it's very blatant is infinite discontinuity this is where you have a vertical asymptote okay or va vertical asymptote that's how i'm going to abbreviate a vertical asymptote okay and that's how the graph for a vertical asymptote look and this is this is a discontinuity right basically the way in which you can talk about continuity is the graph continuous is can you draw the entire graph without taking your pencil off of the page so here clearly you can't but what's the reason for it why is it that you have to remove the pencil off of the page it's because there is a vertical asymptote second type of discontinuity is called a jump discontinuity and here literally the graph jumps from one value to another value right so this normally happens when you have a piecewise function okay another type of discontinuity is a removable discontinuity and this happens when there is a hole in the graph Okay, so how do you do the continuity test algebraically? So it's a three-step process. All right, first, let's go down here. All right, to determine, so the continuity test, oops, the continuity test. So first, here is what you have to show. First, does okay so we're looking at a specific point x equals 2 x equals 3 x equals c at that point x equals c does the graph exist so that's the first question all right f of c must exist second question is the limit of f of c must exist the limit at x equals c must exist third f of c and the value of the limit have to be the same all right so the limit has to equal f of c so now let's go back to our first example for a minute okay all right so in the first part okay so the, we found the limit as x approaches negative four so just for fun, let's find what's f of negative 4. What's f of negative 4? 3, right? At negative 4, the y value is 3. 3. Is the limit and f of negative 4, are they the same? Yeah? So it's continuous at x equals negative 4. Okay. Let's go to x approaches, um, x equals 1. What's f of 1. What's f of 1? Where is it? f of 1? There is no value. It's undefined. There's a hole there. 
right? F of 1 is undefined. Okay. Is F of 1 equal to the limit? No. no. So that's a discontinuous. So it's not continuous there. Okay? So not continuous, right. Here, the limit doesn't exist. Fine. But you know what? What's F of 5? What's f of 5? Is it 2 or 5? Where is the... It's... Okay, so the pole oh, two. is closed at 2. So it's 2. f of 5 is 2. So here is an example where, again, limit and value are not the same. So it's not continuous there either. What's f of 0? Zero? 0. And the limit is 0. So it's continuous there. Okay, so that's how we determine whether or not it is continuous. And then we could go further and say what type of discontinuity. So what type of discontinuity was it here? Removable, removable, and this one? Jump. So the terms are infinite, removable, jump. Matthew question. Determine, okay, so determine whether the following functions are continuous, and we're going to justify using the continuity test. So it's a three-step process, right? So first, step one is find f of 1. Okay, so in this case, f of 1 is 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, 3. So f of 1, whoops. equals 3. Okay, next, graph f of x on a calculator and analyze it around x equals 1 to see what the limit is. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and graph. So graphing that function, we get this parabola, right? Then we go to the, you know, vicinity of x equals 1. That's somewhere around here. So you could do a couple of things here. Let me move this out of the way. We could um, trace. Yeah. Yeah, graph trace. And look, as I approach x equals 1, right, it looks like I'm approaching a value of like 2.7, and then eventually it's going to be 3. And then so from here, as I approach, it looks like I'm approaching 3 as well, right? You can plug it. So the point is not to plug it in because we know what f of 1 is. We just found it. The limit is what value is it approaching? So for a, you know, continuous curve like this, you could even see it visually. At x equals 1, right here, you see that from the left it's approaching 3 and from the right it's approaching 3. So all you have to do is do it visually. You don't have to do anything fancy for this one. Yeah, just trace. You don't even have to like press anything. If you just visually like inspect and see that, okay, so like as I move from, so where is x equals 1? So x equals 1 is, is here. As I move towards 1, what's my graph doing? It's moving up to 3. And as I move towards 1 from here, my graph is approaching 3, right? Right at that point. That's enough to visually inspect it. So now we've determined that the limit is 3, the value is 3. And because f of 1 equals the limit of f of x as x approaches 1, we say, therefore, right? You guys know that means therefore, the three dots. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equals 1. Okay.
All right, so let's take a look at the next one. So step one, f of two is two plus one over two minus two. So that's gonna be three over zero undefined. Already we know that it's a discount that it, that it's not continuous. Okay, so this is enough to know f of x is not continuous at x equals two. But now we have to figure out what type of discontinuity it is. Okay, yeah. Okay, so if you've, so presumably you should know this one from algebra two, right? Now, what happens when the denom, what happens at the point where the denominator equals zero? What do you have on the graph? Not a whole, not, okay, so. All right, so here, here are the different cases. So number one, you have f of x equal to x plus 1, x, um, eh, I don't want that going. All right, it's fine. x plus 1, x plus 2 over x plus 2. Okay. At x equals negative 2, the denominator is 0, right? But now, does this cancel with something in the numerator? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So here, at x equals negative 2, there is a hole. Okay, second situation. You did learn it. f of x is x plus 1 over x minus 2. At x equals 2, the denominator is 0, yes? Does x minus 2 cancel with anything in the numerator? No, that thing is there to stay. So that is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, a positive 2. Okay? So number 2, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So we say it's an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. So most of the time, so what's going to happen is on the tests, I will ask you, um, on the tests, I will give you a problem like this, and then I will say, find, so first of all, determine whether it's continuous, and then I will say, if it's not continuous, state what type of discontinuity it is. Okay. So this one would be infinite. Yeah, infinite because there is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's graph it and see. Go ahead and graph it and see if it also shows up on the graph. So it was x plus 1 over x minus 2. Where is it? x plus 1. Right, so do you see how there is clearly a discontinuity or a vertical asymptote at x equals 2? Okay. All right. Okay, so let's do C. Okay, so here at x equals negative 3, right? So first of all, what's f of negative 3? 3 squared minus 9 over negative 3 plus 3, 0 over 0, so it's undefined. Okay, already we know it's not continuous. But now let's see what type of discontinuity it is, right? So let's see, so f of x 
is equal to, oh, you know what? Let me do that later. Let's do the limit first. The limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x. Another way to write that is, this is the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. Negative 3. Let's graph that. Why don't we do the limit thing for the problem above? If you um, because I, I skipped it just because I, I just did it visually. Like I said, it, um, it already fails. So once it already fails, it's fine. But here I want to show you guys something else. <clears throat> huh? It does, but I want to show you something here. So look at this one. Um, So this is going to be x squared minus 9. Over x plus 3. Okay, look at that. All right, so as x approaches negative 3. Okay, as x approaches negative 3, that's right about here. What y value does the graph look like it's approaching? Negative 3, it looks like it's a little bit lower than that, negative 6. So let's trace it. F of x is undefined, but what's the limit? Look, as, as I approach negative 3 from the left, uh, from the right, where is it approaching? Negative 3. It looks like it's going to negative 6, right? Look, right before that, it looks like it was going to negative 6. Is that right? So now, from the right, if I approach negative 3, where is it going? Negative 6. So the limit is equal to negative 6, okay? The limit very much exists, but the value doesn't exist. Okay, so that means it's not continuous. Okay, so look at what happens now. Let's go back to algebra 2 and think about this function. f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. Well, if I factor the numerator, what does that mean? I get x minus 3, x plus 3 over x plus 3. What happens to the x plus 3? Cancels out. So what type of? It's a whole. So it's a removable discontinuity. There is. The whole technically is at such a tiny, tiny point that you cannot see it because, okay, so if you keep tracing this further, look at what happens at x equals negative 3. It's undefined. Do you see that? But visually, you can't see it because at x equals negative 3, yeah, there is no graph. But then right next to it at negative 2.9999999, there is a graph. At negative 3.0000001, there is a graph. That instant, or that instance where it's undefined, it's such a tiny, minuscule location. It's microscopic. You cannot see it visually, right? And that's the point of it. So look, the limit very much exists, but the value doesn't exist. So it's a discontinuity. Oops. Okay, yeah. Um, if I'm doing this thing, how do I do this? Left and right. Left and right button. You hit trace, so it goes trace number five, and then left and right button, then it'll move the first left and left. Is it doing the time? 
Yeah. We know it's removable because, okay, so we knew that there was a problem in the denominator, right, that negative 3 because the denominator equals 0, right? But then we analyze the function further. We factor at the top, and then we compare it with the denominator. We see that the denominator will actually cancel out. So yes, negative 3 is an issue because you can't plug negative 3 into the function, right? But if you look a little bit more closely, you can cancel this out. When you can cancel out the, new, the denominator, which is giving you an issue, that's a removable discontinuity. But if it's a function like this one, where the denominator can never be canceled out, right? This problem can't go away. You can't get rid of this problem. It's there forever. That gives you a vertical asymptote. Okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, before I go into end behavior, I want to pause.